Welcome back everyone and happy Valentine's Day. I hope you are giving yourself plenty of love. You are sending appreciation and love to your family and friends and especially if you have a special someone in your life. I'm Kai Carrington Russell, fantasy author known for my action-packed steamy fantasy romance and I have a very special guest for you today. I have a power duo in the house and I am so excited to just figure out how, how they've created this brand, how they've manifested these amazing books. We are talking New York Times, we are talking USA Today bestseller, and they are no stranger to hitting number 15, number 25, and number 30 on the Amazon list. We are talking to the one and only Max Monroe. How are you guys today? We're good. Thanks for having us. You make it sound so, I'm like, who are these people? (laughs) I know. I'm like, I'm feeling really good after this introduction. Okay. Imposter syndrome immediately. You're like, yeah, shut up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of like, who is it? A little bit. It's going to be us. Who's here? Sorry, Sorry, that was my introduction. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) So I... Honestly, like I am so in awe of you guys because when I uh, stalked you just a little bit, not creepily, but a lot, um, gosh, you guys have like done some amazing things. And I would love to know individually where you both started in your writing career and then how, what was your meet cue? How did Max Monroe become a brand? Do you want to go first? You want me to? You can, you could start. Okay. Well, before we started writing together, um, I was actually a labor and delivery nurse. I was in nursing for 10 years before I made writing my career. Um, I was writing on my own under a pen name. Um, I think I published like five, five books is what I think it was. Um, and Max and I were friends, um, cause she was writing too. And, we had gone to a few book signings together and, and we just really hit it off. And we don't know who, um, said maybe we should write a book together just for fun, but one of us did. And, um, so yeah, we, we wrote a book together and after that, like the whole process of writing that first book was, like the most fun, um, I've ever had. And we just play off each other very well. And even as writing partners, it can be difficult co-writing with somebody. And, um, we just, we mesh so well. Um, we have no issues with collaborating on a plot line. Um, if one of us thinks, I don't think that's the right route for this chapter, maybe we should take it this way instead. Um, it's just, that's never been an issue for us. We just, there's like no egos involved. It's just a, we're together in this. And um, so, yeah, I mean, our, our, I've said before, I think in another interview, like our story together of our friendship is like a romance story without the romance. Like we're just... <laughs> We were meant to write together. But... Though, now wait a second. Without the romance, romance, there's a little bit of, you know, there's no romance, but we we used to meet in the middle at a hotel. We still do the same yes. thing, but we used to meet in the middle at a hotel in Pennsylvania because she was in Ohio and I was in New Jersey at the time. And I we were convinced that they thought we were, you know, lesbian lovers meeting. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> Up for the weekend because it was always very like, are you here for business or pleasure? And we're always like business, but then we never left the hotel and like we were always just around and it was, so it was very, you know, I guess suspicious. So so no romance uh, on our end, but other people probably think there's plenty um, all over the United States. They a lot of snacks. That room keeps a lot of snacks. (laughs) They need to keep their energy up. I mean, yes. we got really lucky. We, I say this, you know, with the, the utmost respect for us, but we had no clue what we were doing when we decided to write together. We didn't think, hey, we're going to no. be something. We're going to make this into the career together. It was solely, we want to have fun. <laughs> That's what we did when we wrote this book together is the funny part. 
Um, and then I'll credit us since then we've done a lot of work, <laughs> but in the beginning, yeah. we really were like, let's just have fun. Cause we've been kind of slogging on our own for a while yeah. and, um, we just wanted to have a good time and Hey, turned out that it worked out for us. So. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> turned out you, really well. do you now only work under as Max Monroe or do you publish separately under those previous pen names? We're just Max Monroe now. I love that. So it's kind of like you really need to have that entry level into your own little stepping stones, publishing, like you said, those first five books until you guys Mm -hmm. met. And then that's where it took Mm -hmm. off. That was actually where your writing career was meant to be. And I love how magical that is. It definitely sounds like a romance. I absolutely love it. Um, (laughs) And I even saw on, it cracked me up so much. When I was on your website, you have a reveal as to who you both are and you have like little puppet things happening. And I was laughing because (laughs) it just shows how quirky and funny you guys are. Did you want to originally be a nominous or was it... Um, then you decided to like come out and reveal or what was the thought process behind that? Well, we originally wanted to be anonymous. We went that route when we started writing together because, I mean, we, we had readers. I mean, we had small reader bases under our own names and um, Mm -hmm. we didn't know what to expect with what we would create together. So and we also just want it in the, it's like, once we wrote, we're writing together, like it's obviously both of our voices, but together we're not, we're a different voice together, you know? So mm-hmm. we wanted to leave all those expectations out the door and just be anonymous and just publish a book and readers would just mm-hmm. perceive it based on the book. Um, yes. So yeah. That was, that yeah. was the goal. Yeah, so just so that nobody would have any preconceived notion about the, what the book should be, and they would read it just to find out what it was instead of you know because we all have our niches right that we fall into. Even now, um, we are somewhat expected rom com authors. I mean, we can write some other stuff, and our readers enjoy it and all of that. But that's what really is the root of what they expect from us at this point. And when we wrote that first book together, we didn't want any of that. We didn't want anybody to know what they wanted out of the book. We just wanted them to read the book and see if it was what they wanted. So um, that really worked out. And I mean, the whole hullabaloo (laughs) about being anonymous, you know, for lack of a better word, started with a joke. I mean, if you want to be like if if we're going to be candid about it, we had started a Facebook page for, um, you know, Max Monroe. But I mean, we were like, I think we had no followers at the, the time. Like we just made the page. And <laughs> I just as a joke had put on there only for Monroe, right? No one else, no expectation that anyone was going to see it because we had no followers at the time, you know, that, hey, we could be Colleen Hoover. You never know because we're anonymous, right? And it also said disclaimer that we are not Colleen. Hoover. We're not. Yes, it did say disclaimer. We're not Colleen Hoover. Um, yeah. But it was just a joke. It was just a joke. And then people found our page before that we happened, and then Colleen there was Hoover. a whole thing about us being Colleen and. Uh, and it was we were like whoa no like that was a joke we're not we said we're not you know so but it was pretty funny and then Colleen of course she's such a good sport you know she really kind of just dove head first into the joke and just I mean drove it further and further along by speculating I don't know is it me you know which we were like was she crazy (laughs) (laughs) like it's definitely not her but it was a yeah. really fun time. Yeah. She read. She not, read not expected. She ended uh-huh. up, she was one of the first people to read it, to read Tapping the Billionaire. And she, I don't, did she tell us to send it to her? Or did we just send it to her? I think we sent it to her. Like, maybe you should know what this book is <laughs> because you can see people think it's you. Uh-huh. And so we found out she read the book. She 
she had a, she was doing like a live um, video for something. And I happened to be watching it and I kept seeing people asking her like, are you Max Monroe? Are you Max Monroe? And I, I mean, honestly, that stuff was kind of stressing us out because we we're like, we didn't it was. need to happen. Well, and then she's like, uh, actually, I've read the book and, you know, it was really funny and sexy. And I like about fell out of my chair. I think I was texting <laughs> Max, like, it's like incoherent. Like she's, she actually <laughs> read the book. <laughs> she, it was like crazy. It was crazy. It was not, I mean, so there's some stuff in there that I think some people have the perception that we like, we were these masterminds that planned this. And we were like, we're going anonymous. And this is step one. This is step two. No, it just, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it just happened. That's why I said we we put in a lot of work since then, but the beginning was very much um <laughs> tripping into it, you know, those yeah. TikToks where they trip and you know the Oreo accidentally falls into their mouth. So that is <laughs> that was us falling into the beginning of the Max Monroe career. Since then yeah. we've gotten it together, but yes. <laughs> that was the beginning. <laughs> the beginning, yes, that is what happened. <laughs> Gosh, what a whirlwind to start off with. And I can only imagine your minds when people started actually pressing whether you were Colleen Hoover. You're like, I hope yeah. I don't get sued. I hope I don't get like, or whatever. I could imagine that mindset. But that's so awesome that she was all for it. Um, and obviously, yeah. they're, they're phenomenal books. So, of course, she loved it, which is epic. And oh. is that the reason why there are photos of you wearing Colleen Hoover's mask like her face there's a couple of photos I saw and I was like I need to know what this is about yes, this is behind yes. It. yes. that is yeah. we've had <laughs> we've had so many things with Colleen because she was such a good sport since then and a lot of fun mm -hmm. things have come out of it and she's constantly I mean she's still to this day you know says things to us like did I write this book you know just really yeah. being funny she's really funny and um, the, the pictures of us wearing the Colleen masks did have a purpose. We didn't just do that yeah. in our backyard one day. I will say. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, at Book Bonanza in, I, what was it, 2019, I believe. Yeah. Um, they had a lip sync, uh, lip sync contest for the authors we entered and um, for one of two, they talked us into it we have, yeah they talked us into it basically but we were we were one of the entries and then the Are other you? entry was Colleen <laughs> yeah Colleen and Taryn Fisher and Tiffany DiBartolo yes that was the yes. it was them and it was us so yes. we plotted and planned of like what are we gonna do to win against um, <laughs> Colleen in this lip sync and so we came up with you know the dancing colleens of uh, where we had a bunch of our readers really great volunteers um I know. wear colleen masks <laughs> <laughs> that we had special ordered by the way that her assistant was uh, like part of she was in on the whole thing because i had to email her for high resolution photos of colleen because you know, we could steal them from online, but we, for the masks that we ordered, we really needed good photos. So her assistant <laughs> sent me those <laughs> so that we could make those masks. And yeah, um, yeah so that's where that came from. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah, we wore the Sia wigs, which was like a thing. We, <laughs> when we were anonymous, we used the Sia wigs to stay, like we'd take photos with them. I mean, ridiculous. And then, so we were on stage. What's we did a Sia song. We were dancing to a Sia yes, song. Yes, of course. With the wigs on, and then the dancing Colleen's. And our readers were amazing because they were so good. We they were gonna just be like on the stage, kind of dancing around. No, they. There were there was one that jumped off the stage. There there was one that went out in the crowd and was hyping up the crowd. We couldn't see anything behind the wigs. <laughs> Our husbands told us about it after. <laughs> I do you know I absolutely love how light and funny you guys are. Like, congratulations, you're funny. Kaya tick of approval. That's <laughs> <laughs> 
Because well, there's so much pressure, I feel like, all the time about being seen as professional um, mm-hmm. as an author or there's, you know, a lot of expectation. And I think some people are sometimes scared to show who they really are or how to even funnel that through on their social media and that because I think there's such restrictions. So mm-hmm. I love that straight out of the gate, you're like, we're just going to have fun with this. We're going to be ourselves. We're going to have the best time. And look where it's gotten you. Like, and you can tell how happy both of you are. You don't seem stressed. You're obviously, are you on a deadline? Probably. You guys look like you just have <laughs> yeah. fun. I'm, like, I'm just like, what is happening? It's so refreshing to see. Oh, well, that's good. I mean, that's what we hope. Like, I, we do think it's really important to try to be genuine to yourself when you are building your brand, your brand should reflect you. Cause if you're trying to reflect something else, it's, you could have the, the best photos and you could look amazing in the photos, but it's still going to like, people will still perceive it. It's not going to feel completely right because it's not true to you. Um, so mm-hmm. that's why oh. we definitely, I was just going to say what? a web of lies will always unravel and yeah. that, that applies to being your genuine self too. It gets, if you're not being yourself, it's eventually the act runs out, you know, people will find out about you. So <laughs> you've got to just be who you are. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, there's like, I think some people, some authors or anybody that's a, you know, on social media for whatever purpose, I get the pressure. And, and sometimes you can even find yourself wanting to reflect somebody else that you might, maybe you really like their content, or maybe they're really successful in what you're doing. Um, but you really will find the most success in just being yourself because so many people are going to be able to relate to you. Like we all relate to each other on a human level somehow. So we're, you know, Max and I are very quirky, kind of even awkward at times um, Mm -hmm. people. And obviously, and probably most of our readers probably see that in themselves. So I do think that's so important. I mean, we will make complete fools of our, of ourselves. Sometimes I think we don't realize how far we go with things, but until after maybe. And then we find oh. each other as well. That's the thing. Yeah. Just up it and up it. And I love that. Yeah. It, that, yes. I mean, that is also part of it too, probably. Probably. No, yes. It is. Egging each other on. <laughs> We just came up with a TikTok idea today, which I won't reveal for, you know, purposes of keeping it till it's, but trust me, it's one of those times where you're like, are we taking this too far? Possibly, because we'll do anything. So, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> that's that. where we are. Yes, uh, as soon as you said quirky and awkward, I'm like, huh, you're my kind of people. I love this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell yeah. us a little bit about Tapping the Billionaire. That was obviously the first book that you wrote, but I imagine it would have been very stressful and, it, well, maybe, depending, um, because it actually got banned off Amazon because of the cover. So how did you overcome that hurdle? What was that like for you for your first debut novel together? Well, that was pretty devastating because it was doing really well. And, um, yeah, what was it? It was only, it was like within 48 hours. It was mm-hmm. banned to the, like, you needed the link to even be able to find it. To, um, to get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was in the dungeon of, you can't get here yeah. unless it's- someone has specifically <laughs> directed you to this yeah. page with an exact link. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that, God, I mean, that was, that was stressful because it was doing fantastic. Um, I don't know what that book hit when it released I don't remember I don't remember. <laughs> really know that's sad but I, I don't, don't remember, remember at all I don't remember at all but luckily you know it we got it back and it probably took what two two days or something and then it eventually you know things righted mm-hmm. themselves that was it was kind of rough at first because it was doing well and, and we were like really excited and then you couldn't find it <laughs> now I mean and we were so naive at the time I mean not to everything obviously but to the fact that um it's almost Murphy's law in a release situation is that if you're expecting things to go perfect um you know 
sorry, Charlie, <laughs> you've got some, ex- you've got some things coming up on your path. But now we've kind of learned to, to sit in the discomfort a little bit better. I mean, it's been a long road of books since then. So I guess that would make sense. But now we kind of just expect it. You know, if, if something happens, um, we're expecting it to come. So we're just like, what's going to happen this time? And, you know, ready to kind of just <laughs> jockey with it. Like, what do we need to do? Who do we need to contact? We're, we're ready. We're ready. Yeah. So that's kind of how you have to get your mindset is, you know, look, stuff's going to come up and we just got to be ready to tackle it (laughs) head on when it happens. Yeah. Pivot. Pivot. Yes. Pivot a lot. Just like us. um, Yelled in the (laughs) staircase. Yes. Pivot. (laughs) That's that's the thing too, is like every release is different because you do have unexpected, some go higher, some go lower, whatever it may be. There's always so many variances. Um, I am really curious though about your process because obviously co-writing is a marriage um and you're doing that but then also you do a lot on social media you do a lot just really pushing your brand and your books forward so what does that look like what does your day-to-day process look like in writing and then do you both have designated roles when it comes to like marketing and social media how does that look like for you I would say it's always a collaboration with us um, mm-hmm. in everything in our business, in our, you know, building our brand. We are, we do have a schedule <laughs> in terms of, you know, the releases that we want to plan for the year, um, you know, goals that we have, things that we want to get done. But in terms mm-hmm. of writing the books, that generally changes with every book. Um, which probably mm-hmm. sounds crazy to a lot of people. Um, I think, we're, I don't know if it's that we're mood writers or if it's just depends on the characters, um, but we've written books every which way, upside down, sideways. I mean, any way possible, we've probably written a book that way. Um, we've mm-hmm. split chapters up. Uh, one of us has written the beginning. The other one writes the end. We've each taken a point of view. Um, we've pass back and forth every 3000 words. It just depends on what we feel like doing. Um, The one thing that never changes though with books is that we are, when we revise, we're each in every single chapter. We each see every single word. And we generally, I mean, revisions, we probably do about, I mean, it's a few rounds of revisions generally. Um, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everything is a collaboration now. even down to social media, we just, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it, we find kind of a natural <laughs> rhythm, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that sounds kind of ridiculous, but we have kind of a master list. So for releases, we have, you know, what we would consider a master list of our process. Um, all of the marketing steps we take, um, all of the things we want to try to do, influencers, people, bloggers, all of that stuff has somewhat of a consistency and then there's um every release it's considered for what changes we'd like to make from the last one um whether that be because it's a different um nut to crack because it's a different book a different market a different um or just you know uh we need to pivot a little bit because the last book had some problems in this area or this dimension or the marketing wasn't right or we should have done this differently Um, So we're always considering and kind of editing off of a master list and all of our other daily activities, it's kind of the same way. We've kind of got a master list and um, it's just our main objective. There's really no pride or um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) any kind of that involved. It's just, we both have very focused goal of get it done. We both want to do what's best for the brand and so we each are just tackling every day that way and um so that's what will happen is basically (laughs) it'll be like I'm doing this I got this done I did this you're doing this you're doing that you're doing this you're doing that and then you know kind of some of our social media just rolls into a schedule naturally we don't even really set it it's just (laughs) like hey we're alternating days or we're, you know, more your morning, I'm night or whatever it is. We just kind of fall into a natural thing and 
everybody does their part. So the, the wheel keeps turning, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cause I noticed that on TikTok as well, you guys vary. So one day it'll be Max, one day it'll be Monroe, which I think is very clever. And I love too. And I think this is really important to take out of this is that once you have a release, you evaluate afterwards and you reflect on it as to what could be better ne done next time. And I think a lot of authors struggle to do that sometimes because they're so looking ahead, okay, I need to release this one in three months and this one's in two months. And so they're just going, 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 but they're not making any amendments, I think, because you get into such a habit that you just know this is how you release that book now. So I think that's a really important takeout to be growing and working on what you've learned from every release, no matter how long you've people for sure I mean I think it's something that we do like we are always we never let ourselves kind of just settle you know with marketing and releasing um even book writing we're always challenging ourselves but I think um I think most writers do that right we all challenge ourselves with each book but I think when you're self-published and you it is relying on you to market your books um, and to sell your books and build your brand, you can't settle. You need to always be looking for opportunities that you might not have done in a previous release or market or social media opportunities that maybe you weren't doing, but maybe, you know, I might be able to get something out of this. So you try, you know, you give it a try. Um, that's one thing that we've always tried to do is never, we're never afraid to change. We're never afraid to pivot slightly. Um, you know, it's always about how can we improve, but not, not from a place like, okay, for example, we, we are trying to, you know, be more active on TikTok because we really love that platform. Um, it also lends itself to, to be able to use some of that content on, you know, like Facebook and Instagram, <clears throat> which is fantastic. And we had a conversation because I was, Max and I were talking about it and um, I could see as a new author starting out, you start a platform like TikTok and if you see other authors that are crushing it, you know, they're doing fantastic. They have a lot of followers. Maybe, um, I mean, take somebody like Amy Dawes. She recently hit number one because of TikTok, right? I mean, also she writes fantastic books, right? It's well-deserved. Right. But as a new author, you can get lost in the perspective of, I need to make the next viral TikTok video. And you don't, that's not what you need to do. You need to just create content that is going to draw people to you as an author and to your books. And even if one video gets a hundred views or 90 views or whatever, it doesn't matter. That's a hundred people that didn't see anything about that book that have now seen something about that book. And if you go with that mindset and, and most likely out of those hundred people, one probably bought the book. So if you take, it's all crumbs, but it all adds up and it will all help build your platform. So I think that's a, probably one of the main things we've really grown into recently as we've gotten more comfortable in the career is not looking at a short-term thing, like an insane short-term goal. We're just, we want a steady long-term increase. And I think the more authors, especially new authors that kind of switch their mindset to that, the, the more it'll drop the stress level, but it also will lend itself to more success because you're, you will slowly grow. <clears throat> yes. If you can get your mind set to the place, um, this would be advice for, you know, people really starting out. This would be a great number one piece of advice if you ask me, <laughs> um, is never expect to get to the place where you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, because this career does not lend itself to that. I mean, and we get it. It can be exhausting. It is tiring. It's a lot of work. Um, but if you can get your mind right from the beginning that you're never going to figure out this is what I need to do to make a release successful and then have a template and then follow that template until the end of time, that will not work. It is a constantly shifting target and you need to have your mind in the place that says, I'm constantly going to be questioning what can I do? What can I do? What can I do to make this better than the rest? So you can't settle, even if you're number one in the store, 
that does not mean your next book is going to number one in the store because the market will be different. The expectations of the reader will be different. Um, <laughs> the conditions of that month and how many releases there are and that's all going to be different. You have to just play to the time and keep shifting. So like I said, it's, 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 hmm. it's tiring. It could be exhausting. Yeah. But if you get your mind right in that place from the beginning of it's not really a finish line game. It's, you know, just a slow run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just keep a slow run going until, you know, you're dead, I guess. <laughs> That's the key, no, you just keep doing it until you're dead. And then you don't have to worry about it. No. <laughs> keep going until you die. That's our... <laughs> but if you keep our running, model. you're going to get further, you know, you're going to get farther and further along. Yeah. It, just like you would on the road. My gosh, me and these, you know, analogies. But just like you would on the road, <laughs> it's going to be the same with your career. You know, not everybody is going to skyrocket overnight. It doesn't happen. Oh. I mean, you've got to just keep running. Yeah. Keep running. And sometimes you have to slow the pace and sometimes it builds momentum when yes. you're downhill. You're just going to go with the uh, the pivot. For those who are watching, what would currently, what would your must-do top three things be every release that you have? What are the most consistent? Most consistent. Definitely um, newsletter. So, <clears throat> and that is important for any author your newsletter list is going to be probably your most important thing. Um, and I think for us, we've always looked at it as not just trying to get as many people on the list as possible, but make sure we cultivate it in a smart way where either they're choosing to sign up for our newsletter because they've read our books and they want to follow us or <clears throat> Um, we've done things like a free book, right? And, and they, they have a book to read um, from us. So newsletter for sure. Um, what else would you say? Well, what do you think the second thing would be? Um, I, okay, so this is going to be kind of upsetting to some people, but I would say you need to advertise. Now that comes with a caveat because your budget should fit your budget, right? Mm -hmm. No need to go out there and, you know, kill it or overspend a lot of money. I don't think that that's necessary. Um, but there's, there's a, a benefit to be had to getting um, those low hanging branches, as our marketing guy likes to call them, yes. but that aren't directly linked to you, okay? Because you can only reach so many people by a person-to-person -person connection. People who follow us, people who follow people who follow us, people, you know, you only go so far, which is great. Um, but in order to extend past that, you need a little extra help. So I would say definitely start slow. You don't need a, a killer budget. Um, mm -hmm. You have to really curate your advertising content. Um, um, we work really hard on it. We do a lot of options. Um, try and get things that will catch an eye because if you keep in mind the rule that someone needs to see something eight times before it leaves an impression, um, that's like the average is that people need to see something eight times before it actually, you know, follows through to something like them clicking or um, going to investigate it, um, that turns into, you've got to have a lot of eyes on your book. So um, the way to do that is to advertise. And then the other thing to do is to, I would use cross promotion as much as you can just to spread around. So if you have some other friends and they're okay with you popping into their group, and in turn, you let them pop into your group and that sort of thing. Um, all of that is like we talked about before, gives you crumbs that you can sweep uh -huh. into the dustbin that all together make a lot more than a crumb, right? Maybe a whole cookie. So, um, <laughs> I mean, that's really the main thing, but I, I guess what I would say the caveat to that is, is how are you going to stand out? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people are doing it um, because it works, 
<laughs> you need to make an impression. You can't just be doing everything that everyone does. So it's actually proof positive that copying or trying to imitate even people you admire is not actually going to help you in the long run. You need to be individual and stand out. And this comes from the conversation we are just having before about being genuine and allowing your authentic self to come through as well, which is mix in perfectly into the cookie. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> one thing that I'd love to is you guys are USA Today, New York Times bestselling authors, which are huge feats. I would absolutely love to know when you found out you were on those lists and most importantly, how you guys celebrated. <laughs> I wish we would have done something really cool, like <laughs> flew to the Bahamas or something. Uh-huh. Um, I think I was in Florida when we hit New York Times in USA Today for the first time. Oh, I know I, New York and Times. You texted I me. called you. Yeah, yeah, I texted you, and then consequently we got on a, on the phone. But yeah. there were a lot of incoherent words. I mean, the texts were nearly incoherent. Yes, there was a lot of yelling. I remember I was in my bedroom. I don't even know why. I don't know if if I just I have no idea. But actually, um, I first found out a friend texted me at the time she was working in the um, publishing industry, completely unrelated. I mean, we couldn't my career and her career couldn't have been further apart. (laughs) But she just so happened to have been looking at the New York Times list and saw that we were on there and she texted me and was like you know you're on New York Times and I was like what (laughs) (laughs) we are and so then she you know sent me the picture of it and I don't know we freaked out we did not celebrate in any big way I can tell you that we we generally don't we're pretty little party poopers um and we are <laughs> always saying that we should celebrate more. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a plan if and when we should one day hit number one on Amazon. So um, if that happens, there will be a celebration. <laughs> um, yeah. That's the only plan we've got going for us. <laughs> Speaking of celebration then, you guys are so involved when it comes to conventions, as we are talking about before, doing a sing-off, lip-syncing, why not? Um, yeah. And I love to, like, I loved how fun some of the photos I was talking about, so how fun the photos were and just how interactive you are with your readers. And so I am curious as to what advice you would have for fellow authors when setting up their tables. Some can find it very intimidating, especially when it's their first time. And I'd also love to know what your most memorable reader moment has been. Okay. Um, Okay. So I have advice for setting up your title. Okay. Okay. I have advice and it's pretty simple, a lot simpler than you're going to think it is. Um, There are two things that are important. If you ask me for when you're setting up your signing table, one, make sure your name is big and somewhere so that they can find you. Um, whether that's a banner behind you or whatever. It's just in the room when it's crowded, it can be really hard to find the person you're looking for, even if they're already looking for you. And then the second thing is a big old smile. (laughs) It might sound so ridiculous, but you could have the best books, books, the best swag, the best decorations, the best, all of that stuff. But if you are not smiling and feeling approachable for that reader, they're not coming to your table. (laughs) You know, they want to see you and they want to have a good time. They do not want to go to someone who's not in the mood to be there. So, you know, if you're an author who can't turn that on and be genuinely happy to see everyone, you probably shouldn't go to signings. And I don't mean that meanly, but I've had several times in my career where Um, readers have their impression of an author has gone downhill after meeting them um, versus it should definitely go the other way around. I swear at signings it is like I'm so happy to be there it's such a wonderful time but I find them one 
one of the most exhausting days because you were yeah. so on the whole time. You're meeting amazing people. You're yeah. celebrating things together. And by the end of the day, my face hurts from smiling yeah. so much to the point where I feel like if people are walking past, I'm getting this like weird thing happening because I'm trying to smile, but yeah. like, I don't know how to smile anymore. <laughs> Yes, yes, oh it is exhausting. Yes, yes, it is. It is the best feeling. It's so fun, but it is exhausting for sure. Because you want to be able to give 100% back to mm-hmm. the readers who have joined this community with you, who have been on part of your journey and help you grow as an author. So that then mm-hmm. leads to my question as to what your most memorable reader interaction moment has been. Man, I don't know. There's been I've a got lot one that of that sticks out to to me. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's only what one is- just right off the bat in um in Rome, in the at the signing in Rome. Um we had a reader that she was so excited and she was so colorful and fun and she had a shopping cart full of books and she was just like larger than life and what? so positive about everything. And yeah. so kind to us and very, very warm about loving everything we've done. And so, so loving about the fact that we had traveled to Italy and, you know, I mean, wow, that's so, such a hardship for us, you know, but I mean, <laughs> they, it was, it was, it sticks out in my mind. She to this day sticks out in my mind just because she was so um, genuine. She wasn't afraid to talk to us and be herself and, um, we really just had a good time with her. I remember her. So. I think uh-huh. another one, I mean, we always have an amazing time at the signings, meeting readers, mm-hmm. but it probably was our, the book bonanza that we went to, which is actually where we like, you know, we, this is us. We're Max Monroe. Uh-huh. Um, we had a, um, a get together just for our readers and our reader group camp love yourself. And, um, we hosted a little breakfast and it was just really, it was a really special day with them because that was the first time, you know, they had been, these were like our readers. They had been in our reader group since like, you know, day one and they didn't know who we were, but they were like reading all of our books. And that Mm -hmm. was really that was really special too. Yeah, I, I agree. That was a lot of fun. one thing then that I found really amazing on your page. Many things, obviously, it was like just finding a gold mine in there. But you have really cool book boxes and merch on your website. So I was curious, and again, same thing like the setup of the um, table at conventions. I think authors can sometimes get overwhelmed by swag or having out of the box ideas as to how to present their books to readers. What advice would you have for that? Well, I think you always try just, you always keep a budget in mind, right? Like, I mean, we could come up with some crazy outlandish things. Um, You know, a a blimp flying around (laughs) with Max Monroe on it. We just don't have the budget yet for that. But so you always want to know what your budget is Um, because you can create some really great swag for not a ton of cost. Like that is definitely Mm -hmm. possible. So um, because we just did the book boxes. What was that? 29, 2020, I think. 2020? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think. Uh, uh, Yeah, 2020, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what we ended up doing is we put our, our first three books, we did, um, animated covers. So we did limited edition covers. That was what the first book box, book box was, was the limited edition covers. And, um, we sold that on our website. We didn't offer those covers anywhere else. We just offered them on our website. So, and we, we saw great, um, it was a great thing that we did, um, But I think the most important thing for any author thinking about selling merch and stuff on their website, it really is about budget Um, because my personal view is if you, if you are choosing between 
advertising through Facebook ads or Amazon ads for a new release over book boxes or really cool swag that even though it might feel like, oh, but this like is so perfect for the book, choose the advertising, keep that mm-hmm. idea in mind. And then when you reach a point where you can, that you have enough budget to do that, then you do that on your website. And then you kind of draw new people to the books that might not have seen them. Um, mm-hmm. That's my viewpoint on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One step at a time, basically. Yeah. Don't get ahead of yourself. Um, just advice as far as thinking of products. Um, it doesn't have to be something super outlandish. Um, it could think in the the area of uh, what will people actually use or want to have. Um, I mean, some stuff is great, right? But if it's going to go on their shelf and maybe they that's an extra expenditure for them. If it's something that they could use like a pen or yeah. A, a, yeah, a tote or a coffee mug that like they're going to carry with them every day. Um, people have more room in their budget to spend that on your merch than if it's something just for decoration versus something, an, an item they can say, this is my new coffee travel mug. It just happens to say Max Monroe on it, <laughs> you know? Um, but a caveat on that also, as we always say, just make it fun, make it something someone would want to have versus just thinking, oh, it just matches the book perfectly. Obviously that's great, but think of yourself and think of what products you would actually want to buy and try to, you know, go that direction. (laughs) If you wouldn't want a cup that said that on it, you know, maybe (laughs) other people wouldn't want it either. You know, so just kind of think in that kind of perspective of would this actually be useful to someone? Would they actually like to have this? Mm -hmm. Um, That's really the place to start, I would say. Well, and we also, to be honest with you, another thing that kind of always helps us gauge what to offer in our store is what our readers are asking us for in our reader group. Um, that's probably the number one spot. We'll see other comments, you know, on our Facebook page or Instagram or whatever. But if they're really asking you for something over and over again, that like gives you an idea of what kind of stuff they're wanting. And I'm sure in the past, we've probably done polls at times, like in our reader group, just ask them, like, what would you like mm-hmm. to see, you know, in our, in our store? Um, most readers, to be honest with you though, most just want your signed paperbacks. That's Mm-hmm. generally why they're going um mm-hmm. that's from what from our experience that's what we've seen and that's great advice to making sure that you're keeping it practical but fun at the same time and the thing mm-hmm. is too is like mm-hmm. as you suggested a mug or a pen they're using that every day they're seeing your name mm-hmm. or your brand um and that familiarization and that's something that people can pass around or they'll see an intrigue oh what's that name mean or what does this what is this from um so i think those are great right. tips this is my favorite question to ask what is the goal that you're chasing what is the big dream for max monroe oh man <laughs> what is our okay, dream <laughs> well okay the the big dreams we have I mean it, we have steps right so we have things that I would say are closer to immediately attainable and then we have things that are five-year ten-year goals sorts of things where we just it's something we would like to see happen in the span of our career um, yeah. which most of our goals by the way are that a timeline on a goal is the death of a goal. Basically, if you say, I've got to do this in a year, I mean, it's great to have vision of that, right? But you can't, you, if you put a timeline on it, you're, you're really going to, there's going to lead to a lot of disappointment mm-hmm. and um, a lot of stress, undue stress. Um, take take a step at a time towards that goal. And it takes how long it takes as long as you're making progress toward it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't go the wrong direction. Just keep walking forward. Um, keep running. (laughs) Um, No, but it's so you die. (laughs) Until you die. But I mean, some of our, I have it on our board, my board. I'm trying to think, um, some of our major, major goals, 
things that we would love to happen in our career mm -hmm. um, are to have some type of um, TV or film happen. Yeah. Um, like I said, no deadline on that, no boundaries <clears throat> or perceptions of what it should be, but we'd like to see something like that happen. Mm -hmm. um, we, we would, we would love to be number one on Amazon at some point. Um, that's not like something that gives us value, but it is, we've been close. So now it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, with the bed, like almost like a little puppy, just like nipping at the yeah. plus we have great motivation for that one because, um, we, we plan to just drop everything and, and just go somewhere together the yeah. moment that happens. So, I mean, that's really the that's number true. one drive driving part of that, <laughs> that rank for me. 2022. <laughs> because yeah. really number one, number two, eh, you know, but I really, I'd like to go on a trip um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> spontaneously. So yeah. um, that's that. And we also, we would love to be, um, obviously we'll never be fully traditional, but we'd love to do it one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like to try traditional one time just to say we did you know um, yeah. I think that's but there's one thing that uh, there's one thing that we do though every year that I do think is important like mm -hmm. last year our main focus last year was newsletter we were like okay mm -hmm. we want to really build up our newsletter followers and also keep them engaged really draw right. them um, and we do that by uh, you know, we send out entertaining newsletters weekly, mm -hmm. um, that sometimes it'll tie in our books, but a lot of times it's just funny, relatable content. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, when we have a release, we, we send a newsletter out to our readers, but so newsletter was our, our big goal last year. I mean, it's still ongoing, but that we, we mm -hmm. set that goal like, okay, we're really going to start ramping this up. We really need to get we want to see more newsletter subscribers and we really succeeded in that goal. We, I don't know what the percentage of that went up, but you know, we just made sure we did a lot of things that would help draw new subscribers in. And mm -hmm. I think it is important if you kind of set realistic goals, we didn't say how many newsletter subscribers we wanted to get. We just said, we want to really increase the subscriber number um, and, and increase the open rate and keep them engaged. So that's what we did, um, for 2021. That was the goal. And every year we kind mm -hmm. of set that goal of like our big focus, like what we're really going into this year is this right now. And then mm -hmm. we also have our, you know, our big goals, like Max was saying. Um, but mm -hmm. all of those things is how you get to those big goals. If you're right. setting those right. small goals, building your reader base, that's how you get there. And remaining consistent. The small goals keep you, keep you focusing on one thing at a time, because yeah. even us, some days you get overwhelmed where you want to do everything in one day yes. and you cannot, yes. you cannot, you can't even do everything in one year. It's not yeah. possible. So no. pick something to be your focus. Like that's yeah. exactly what Monroe said. That's what we did. And we try to do that every year tackle one thing at a time, you know, yeah. and then you have to keep all the other stuff floating. You can't abandon what you did. You have to keep it moving, but, but pick one thing for growth at a time and focus on that one thing instead of trying to do all the things all the time. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's too many, it's way too many. And it'll make you, it'll create so much anxiety within you. If you're trying to do all the things in, in like, like me, my Instagram to be a hundred thousand and new newsletter subscribers, 200,000, like <laughs> you will want to, you'll be done for you'll, it'll just be like this cycle of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Um, so setting that one goal with not like a, we didn't really have an expectation on the number of subscribers. We just knew, okay, we want to build it. Here's the things we're going to do this year to do that. And it was successful. Um, and then the things that we did last year, obviously, are easily rolled into this year. So then you continue that growth yeah. um, year after year. So that's kind of how we do it. We're all, I mean, it's, it, we're always pivoting like yeah. Ross with I the cow. <laughs> 
I do have a segment called Speed Dating with an Author. So we're going to go, it's Valentine's Day, so we're going to go on a very romantic date. I've lit a candle. I've created ambience. <laughs> but basically what it is is five rapid questions. Are you ready? Okay, ready. We're ready. Yeah. What's the clumsiest moment you have ever had? Clumsiest moment? <laughs> I mean, we weren't that skilled at dancing at Book Bonanza when we were lip syncing with the Sia wigs on. No. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't that great. Oh, this? What? Is there a recording of this? I want to see this performance. Uh, there probably is. Like, I'm pretty sure Colleen had a, that. it might be on Colleen's page. Ooh. I'm sure it's somewhere. It's somewhere. I'm sure it's somewhere. I'm going to yeah. like search. I've got this. Um, <laughs> what are the three words that would best describe you? Us as a duo? Yeah. Let's go duo. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Quirky for sure. Mm -hmm. Fun. Silly. I think we're just very silly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. about separately? Separately. Um, definitely. I, I'm definitely mm -hmm. silly. I, I got to keep that one. Um, mm -hmm. I am determined and yes. what else would I be um I don't know I think I'm I think I think you're really pragmatic like yeah. as as time goes on you try really hard to always like think of all of the like everyone's you're trying to think how everyone would think and like understand you know you're very open to like was I being a little harsh was I I think you're very pragmatic in that way oh well, that's a good quality thank yeah. you <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> I would say I am <laughs> um fun mm -hmm. um easygoing mm -hmm. for the most part anyway mm -hmm. and um non-confrontational <laughs> I can't stand confrontation who we'll can't stand it <laughs> well but I think I think you should say peacekeeper because I okay that's a better because that you just don't want people to feel bad like that's the whole yes. point of the non-confrontational because you do you're a confident person do you know what I mean like yes. you are you're confident yes. yourself but you don't want other people to feel bad for sure. That's true. Yeah. I would say that's accurate. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel like I should be on this date. I feel like I'm intruding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the song that best describes Max Monroe? The song? Um, oh, I feel like this is a job for you because you're going to think of more songs than I am. Whoa. Oh, best describes Max Monroe. Um, I mean, it's going to have to be a Sia song. We have to. We did Wait. Sia Wings uh -huh. for three years. Um, I mean, we danced to the cheap thrills, but I don't, <laughs> I, don't know that I don't know that that's the best description. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, cheap thrills. Um, cheap thrills. Yeah. You know, what's uh, the Bulletproof song? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's Titanium is what it's called. Oh, um, yes, yes, yes. And that's a really powerful song. Um, and it's really about just continuing forward, even when you are faced with a lot of um, hardships and struggle. I think together that's what we do um, because if I had to deal with some of the things that we deal with on my own, it would be, a, it would be way harder. I don't know that I would be able to navigate it well. And I think we balance each other in when we are facing struggle in the publishing mm -hmm. industry. I mean, even in our personal lives, cause we're, we're best friends outside of just, you know, writing together. But I think we just, we are, we are a good support system for each other. So that would be the like serious I, song. I mean, I guess I could pick a fun song. We write rom-com and I'm like giving like the most emotional <laughs> song ever. Uh, what, um, what, would, what is your life motto? 
Life mm. motto. Well, my family has a motto. Um, and a lot of people take this the wrong way, but I'm going to explain why this is our motto. So our motto is no excuses. And that I think some people take that in such a harsh way, but that's not what it is. So no excuses is so like, say I decide, say I had something I was supposed to do for Max Monroe. Say I was supposed to write 3000 words and send it to Max. And, and I just literally chose not to do it. So I could make an excuse and say, well, it was just a crazy day. And, or I could take accountability for it and say, look, I didn't do it. Like I was just lazy. I didn't do it. <clears throat> and by doing that, by taking the accountability, you will most likely not put yourself in that position again. Um, and when you take that kind of accountability for yourself and what you do, you are most likely not going to be affecting other people negatively. You're only going to be doing what you should be doing, you know, um, in, in living up to your responsibilities. So, yeah, I mean, that's our family motto. <laughs> I would say, I would say my motto, it comes from a song. I plan to get it in a tattoo one day. It hasn't happened yet, but I have other tattoos, but I just haven't gotten that one. Um, but it's, it's a simple lyric, but it's that the sun is always rising. Just look beyond the clouds. So, um, cause I'm a very, I, tr most of the time I'm a very optimistic person, but we all have our moments and, and, you know, downers or things that we're dealing with. And, um, for me, I always try to keep that in mind because if today's cloudy, the sun's still back there. It's just behind the clouds and the clouds are going to leave and everything's going to be good again. Mm. So that's what I try to keep in mind on a daily basis to keep myself, you know, in the right mindset. Um, that doesn't mean I don't go through emotional <laughs> ups and downs. I definitely do. I just try to think of that to get me to the next day, you know, where it'll be a better day than it was today. So that's what I try to live by. I have had so much fun today. Thank you so much for coming on. And where do we need to find you? Where's our, our reader groups? What's coming out? What's next? Um, well, you can, our website's authormaxmonroe.com. Um, we have a reader group on Facebook. It's called uh, Camp Love Yourself. And you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. And I think they're all Author Max Monroe. And, mm -hmm. and if you go to our website, you can get a free book. It's called Gotta Have Faith. Mm -hmm. So you should go check that mm -hmm. out. And what else? Yeah, you could sign up for our newsletter on our website also, which mm -hmm. that's the best way to hear from us about everything that's going on, as well as <clears throat> every random topic under the sun that we could possibly get some fun out of. Yeah. <laughs> And I would definitely say sign up because I know I'm on your newsletter and I follow you on TikTok as well. Um, and you guys are hilarious. So definitely sign up to that, guys. You've got the time of your life. Um, but once again, thank you so much um, for joining me. I've had so much fun and watch your space. Maybe we'll get you on next year. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Thank you so much. We've had a great time. Yes. Absolutely. All right. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.